Welcome to the first episode of The Checkpoint. This is a brand new podcast, a brand new project that I've been preparing for a long time now, where I'm going to be sharing with you new game releases and overall news about the gaming industry. And this is really something that caught my eye because there's a lot of amazing game releases out there and there's a lot of changes on the gaming industry as well but it seems that a lot of people just do not know about it you know they're not aware about these things that are happening so in this podcast uh, I will try to bring news so that people can be up to date about great game releases but also about new stuff that are changing on the gaming industry that could bring a big positive uh, light into the future. You know, this could mean that the gaming industry is going to change for good. So welcome to the checkpoint. And we're going to start, you know, with something that will impact um, the gaming industry quite a lot, but also something that a lot of people might like, which is the brand new release of Final Fantasy Rebirth. This is the second part of the supposed Final Fantasy VII uh, trilogy that they want to make. This, for those of you that are not aware, back in the day they released Final Fantasy VII and they are now getting a remake um, on recent years, you know, but with a new formula. They want the game to be um, something fresh, but keeping while keeping the essence of the old Final Fantasy. And the first part was called the Final Fantasy Intergrade or Final Fantasy Remake simply, uh, Final Fantasy VII that is. But now the second part of the trilogy is now out. This is uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth and it just is blowing up in the, in the social media at the moment. People on Twitter are going crazy. This is the first time that I see people on Reddit especially, and people on Twitter going hard for a single-player story game, aside from uh, the from software games such as Elden Ring or Dark Souls. So this is this is big, because even, even on Twitter, they're, they're saying on every poll, what is your, your favorite game of 2024 so far? And a lot of people say Helldivers, a lot of people say Last Epoch, a lot of people say Power Worlds. But a lot of people are also saying Final Fantasy Rebirth, and this is fantastic. And for a lot of you that are not aware um, or were not aware about the release of this game, know that it is now fully out. Um, But it does have one big issue, and this is where you'll see that it's probably going to change the future of the industry, or the very least for a lot of franchises, because... It seems like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has a big performance issues to a point where for the first time ever, the Square Enix developers or the developers who works for them and the developers for Final Fantasy said, hey, we're having an issue here. People are starting to complain, people are starting to realize. And the problem was that if you set the game at 60 FPS or higher, the game would just instantly crash or delete your save or it will simply freeze. And this just makes it completely unplayable in the literal sense. But also, even if you manage to keep going, you will have a, a huge FPS fluctuation where not only you wouldn't be able to to reach the 60 FPS, but rather you would be struggling at like 14 FPS or lower, you know, so there is a big performance issues, uh, issue with uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth that even the developer said, enough, we we have to do something about it because we actually managed to output a, a product that people are liking because um, we know that Final Fantasy 16 didn't got that big of a... Like, it was not as popular as it, as it was intended to be. For Spoken was a complete failure. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 before that was also not as popular as people expected it to be and the developers themselves expected it to be. So now with Final Fantasy Rebirth, a game that finally people are enjoying, boom, it comes with performance issues. And this is important because when a developer acknowledges 
that there is an issue when they have never done it before, I think this is a glimmer of hope. You know, this is um, that little light that says there is hope for this company because when Final Fantasy XV got released, nothing was said about that performance issues. It, it ju it's just left like that as a very unoptimized game, leaving you with low FPS, even if you used a 2080 Ti back in the day. Um, then for Spoken, it was unplayable for a lead in the literal sense. You could not even run it because it would crash uh, until they made a day one patch. And then it was just pure low FPS. And now with Rebirth, the low FPS issues is coming again. Uh, but this time the developers came out and said, hey, this is enough. And uh, this is a big difference, you know, from when they released Final Fantasy 16, because over there, they tried to justify all of the issues that they had. Oh, motion blur is causing people to get dizzy and motion sickness. No, it's okay. It's, we, it's, it doesn't, it's not that strong. Eventually, they had to change it. But this time, from the get-go, they're saying, we admit there is an issue. And we are working on a patch. And now they are actually um, uh, announcing, I think, I think it was today, earlier today, at the moment of recording the video on March 4 or March 5 now. Uh, earlier today, they said that the patch is being prepared and they will be released. It will be released soon. So that is good news. Finally, the developers acknowledged it. And this does mean that for future uh, game releases, we might have better games in terms of performance as well, because um, this is not the first time that it happens. It has been happening for a very long time. It's just that it's the first time that they had to admit. And for them to admit that this was a problem, it's because the problem was really big. You cannot fail on a game such uh, as popular as... Um, Final Fantasy VII is probably the biggest game that you have out there and you really want it to succeed and I think if they manage to put in a system where they can release better performance game now uh, games will always have issues due to the nature of coding and how programming works um, but if you can minimize them that would be nice especially on big on big names such as Final Fantasy. I myself have been very critical of of Square Enix because they they just didn't care much about their products. But I think it seems like that is starting to change, which is good. It's the first time I ever see them apologize for a performance and actually saying, "Hey, we're going to change it." So that is that is big news. So Amazing, amazing uh, news for the future, you know, but uh, let's continue because I have more news to share with you, especially for all of you Pokemon fans out there that haven't been up to date with the news. The Pokemon ZA was announced. Now, this is going to be Pokemon Legends ZA. That's the full name of it. And it's going to have the same structure as the Pokemon Legend Arceus. And for those of you that did play Legend Arceus, you know that this is probably the most fun uh, system that we have in a very long time. We were able to have an open world where we could explore everywhere. But not only this, uh, each area was instanced as if, uh, as if it was a dungeon. That means that loading times uh, and FPS were much higher than normal. In fact, Pokemon Legend Arceus does run much better than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And it's not even close. Um, especially if you see um, how the game runs on, on the open world full of Pokemons. Uh, Legend Arceus is just so much better in terms of performance. Graphically wise, it looks better as well. And now that we have a new remake, sorry, a, a new game announced of this uh, same line of games, I, I, I'm just excited. I want to play it because I loved Pokemon Arceus a lot. I don't have it on my YouTube channel just yet, but I might upload it soon because I've been wanting to get specific Pokemon from that game. So I might upload it soon to, that, to my YouTube channel. But the game itself, 
of ZA promises a lot because it comes with the same structure of Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is amazing, which is already really good news. But not only this, it announces a lot of stuff that we were asking for a very long time. Now, Legend ZA, it's going to be located in Old Kalos. This is from Generation 6, you know, the region from egg, Pokemon X and Y. And more specifically, it's going to be, we're going to be located in the city of the Lumios. So in the Lumios city. And all of this implies, and it has been confirmed already, in fact, that Mega Evolutions are coming back into our Pokemon franchise. <laughs> I'm so happy. Finally, f Mega Evolutions are coming back. Uh, for me, personally, I think Mega Evolutions are the best mechanic in the game by far. Um, in terms of just enjoying the actual game, it's just really fun to use them, especially Primal Ground and Kyogre. I'm a big fan of them. Really, really big fan of them. Uh, but what is more important is that this is a legend game, which means that we might even have a region specific mega evolutions. And that is just wow. The like old Lumio city with specific mega evolutions. That's just fascinating. And not only we're going to have the mega evolutions, we're also going to have region specific, um, forms as well of older Pokemons uh, because we saw that on Pokemon Legend Arceus that we go for ex that we got for example Hisuian Desidui, Hisuian Samurott, Hisuian um, Typhlosion for example just to name a few as well as others such as Hisuian Avalog which I think the the actual design is amazing um, Imagine that, but with Generation 6, what we could have. It's going to be, oh, I'm so excited, especially with Mega Evolutions, like region-specific um, forums plus region-specific Mega Evolutions. Oh, this is going to be so cool. And uh, not to mention region-specific legendaries. Because we got in Pokemon Arceus, Enamorous. And Enamorous is extremely powerful in Trick Room... Uh, settings, but also on a normal uh, 1v1 smog on meta, it's really, really fucking good. So I'm so excited for this. I think we should be very hopeful, especially because they didn't show any gameplay. And this could mean that they are saving the gameplay for a potential switch to release. And that would blow my mind. Like that, that my, if that happens, wow, that would be so cool. Um, new Legend Arceus with a new system to run with Mega Evolutions, and knowing that Legend uh, Legends game is an in between game, meaning, for example, when a generation transitions into the next generation the game that connects both a generation is the pokemon legends which means for example in pokemon sword and shield it was connected to pokemon arceus and then arceus was connected to pokemon scarlet and violet in the pokemons that we could use for competitive and now this could happen also for pokemon um, generation 10 which we could have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet connected to um, this Pokemon Legends ZA and that connected to generation 10 and this is big because we got confirmation or not confirmation but um, a potential spoiler and potential confirmation in game that Terastalize is going to be a mechanic that it will be coming back in Generation 10. But now with Legends Arceus, or sorry, with Legends ZA, we might have the Mega Evolutions also, also coming 
on the generation 10 of Pokemon. So I think Pokemon is going to be amazing. This is this is just insane. And, and this is only for the Switch versions of Pokemon. I think what is coming in the future is very bright. And, and uh, the gaming industry itself is going to be fascinating in the following years. And oh, if it keeps like this forever, man, it's going to be... Being a gamer, it's going to be awesome. But this is not all. Because the Legend ZA is located in the region of Kalos, of all the Kalos, in fact, we might get a... Um, the backstory of ZA, which for those of you that do not know, ZA or Z, Z was a man who participated in the war that was uh, that, that took place uh, several years in the past of Kalos, and the entire Pokemon X and Y was filled with glimpses at Z. And Z is a man actually that appears at the end of Pokemon X and Y um, to gift you the rare Floet, if I remember correctly. So exploring this potential war of Pokemon could be insane, especially because Pokemon Legend Arceus is not like, Poke like the mainline games. It is actually quite dark, in fact. Pokemons can literally attack you. So this is a more mature line of games. And if we get to explore the Kalos War in Pokemon ZA, that could be just mind-blowing. That could be the best potential game of Pokemon that we ever had, especially with Mega Evolutions coming in and Legendaries coming in as well. We're going to find Xerneas for sure, or at least I imagine that we might find it. We're going to find Ivelta. We're going to find the special form of Zygarde, the 100% form, uh, because that is what um, we get as well on this, you know. So this is going to be amazing. And a true redemption as well for the Generation 6, because I feel like Generation 6 got a bit overshadowed by the fact that they released the uh, remakes of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So um, Pokemon Legends ZA is going to be a rebirth of the sixth generation and the comeback of Mega Evolution. So I'm very excited for this. But that's it for the Switch versions of Pokemon. And uh, I will actually leave this uh, news with the... Um, promotion events or the special events so if you are in pokemon scarlet and violet you can actually get this week the venusaur on raids then it's gonna switch to blastoise and charizard so this is gonna be really good as this will be six star raids which means that you're gonna have guaranteed at least five perfect ivs on your pokemon so Make sure to do the raids this week as you are going to have access to the Pokemons from these raids, like the starters from the raids. Um, and this, you do not need to have DLCs. You don't need to have anything. You just need to update your game on the Nintendo Switch Online, and that's about it. Um, you're going to have all of these events start to run on your game. But uh, speaking of events and speaking of other Pokemon games on other platforms, uh, Pokemon Go will have now the best month or like the best way to start the year because this month is going to have Shadow Mewtwo, Shadow Raikou, Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre, and Zarud on a raids on top of the Tapus. I think it's going to have um, Tapu Coco and Tapu Lele on the raids. So make sure to do some raids in Pokemon, Sky, in Pokemon Go so that you can get these Pokemons as they are by far some of the strongest Pokemons that you can get in this game. And it's not even a question, especially if you can get your hands on a uh, Groudon and Kyogre, you're set for life as these are the best current ground types 
and water types in the game. And with Shadow Mewtwo, now, if I remember correctly, Shadow Mewtwo is the best as well uh, psychic type Pokemon, and Shadow Raikou is the best electric type Pokemon at the moment of recording this video. So, if you want, if you are interested in those, make sure to do some raids and keep an eye on the raid calendars as well, on the lay and the raid schedules. And if you are like, if you are a person who are you starting out in Pokemon Go and you are interested in knowing how to get to that point where you can get all of the best Pokemons in the game, uh, I do have a personal news, you know, because I'm gonna be releasing this um, guide on Pokemon Go about on, on how to go from zero to hero, how to go from literally nothing to um, the point where you can solo most five star raids. Um, I'm gonna be posting um, my guides once I finish doing the testings because I want to show you the best possible content and therefore I have to test the advices that I'm gonna give you in my own scenario. So I have started a brand new account and I'm gonna be using all of the tips, all of the advices that I will be using on my own guides uh, from experience and with the proof on my own account. So make sure to check my YouTube channel, Comet YT, if you want more news about that. And to finish off this news, because I want to have this, uh, or I want to have a shorter um, news. Um, I, I just want to have shorter news um, so that it is more accessible for everyone, you know, I don't want it to go longer than 30 minutes. And to finish this news, uh, there was a leak actually from a store, an online store, uh, showcasing that Ghost of Tsushima is coming for PC. So for all of you who are um, fans of Ghost of Tsushima and want to ha play, be able to play at a much higher resolution with much better graphics or for those of you who didn't have the opportunity to play this game as it is a PlayStation exclusive this could be really good for you because Ghost of Tsushima is coming to PC or at the very least that was what the leaks said um and this could be this this is this is pretty big because I know that a lot of people really like Ghost of Tsushima even more than other PlayStation IPs. So having this game coming to PC, that could be amazing. Now, this is only a leak. And I would take it with a grain of salt because sometimes people uh, put out fake leaks, but this was on an actual store. So it could be true that Ghost of Tsushima is coming on for this summer or before. So make sure to check the news again in case that there is confirmation of this happening. And I mentioned how that was going to be the last news, but I have another big one which is the DLC for Elden Ring has finally been how can I say this? Let's just say this. We finally have confirmation of the date for the Elden Ring DLC, but also we finally have more details about the Elden Ring DLC. And the DLC itself is going to be releasing on Friday, June 21 of this year. So June 21 of 2024, we will have the release of the Elden Ring DLC for PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series S and X. So this is going to be fantastic for all of you Elden Ring fans. And we have a lot of news as well, which is the size of the map that we are going to be able to play in Elden Ring is going to be similar to what Limgrave um, uh, 
class, you know, so the, the territory itself is very similar to what Limgrave, uh, to the to what Limgrave is. So if you want to have an approximate of the size of the map, that is what you can expect it from to, to be, and it's it's actually quite big because not only is going to be the size of this uh, area on itself, but also remember this is just the surface. It could have many levels, like caves or even things above the city, um, like we had in other areas of Elden Ring. So I'm so excited to see how they're going to play this out, because I feel like for a DLC, that is quite of a big area. And I think it's really good for for the game to release something like this, because it's, it's going to be something more like an expansion rather than an actual DLC, as they have also confirmed that there are going to be many, many, and I really mean many new bosses into the game, many new weapons, many new gear, uh, and many new collectibles so that you can go and get all of this stuff. Uh, so Elden Ring, finally, uh, June 21, 2024, is the release date of this amazing title. So make sure to check it out. I will definitely uh, keep my eye on it because I, man, I really want to play it. And there's a lot of people who are like, please just give us more. Uh, and there's a good reason for it. It's just a fantastic game and it's going to be even better um, with the release of the DLC because Mi Miyazaki itself, he has confirmed that a lot of the bosses, if not all of the bosses, have been designed with the same mindset that they designed uh, Malenia. And we know that a lot of people enjoy fighting Malenia because it is a challenging fight that makes you actually get better at the game in order to beat it. So if we have many bosses like that on the DLC, that could be a fantastic way to to basically end the chapter that is Elden Ring, uh, as we know that they said that they didn't want to make more than one DLC or expansion for the game. So this is gonna be an amazing closure for this uh, for this wonderful game, because it's gonna be a very long story, a, quite a big map to be honest. If we compare it to the entirety of Elden Ring map. Um, and a lot of stuff to do. So let's see how it ends up being. I'm so excited for this and we're definitely going to have a bright 2024 in front of us. Uh, but that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this version of the Checkpoint podcast. So this is just the first episode and trust me, a lot more is coming into play. But for now, thank you so much for watching. My name is Comet, and if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe, make sure to subs, uh, make, make, make sure to um, check out my YouTube channel as well. And for now, I will leave you until the next episode. Peace.